Hi there, great to see you again. I have taken a real wedding for this video, called it down to only the couple shoots, and we're gonna go straight into editing so that you don't have to be bored with the culling. Before we start, later in this video, I'm gonna give a bonus tip on how I took this photo and removed the bridge in Photoshop. That's pretty crazy. And also how I took this raw photo and ended up with this result. Lastly, and a great bonus, for three days, I'm gonna run 50% of my Omnibus preset. The code will be in the video later on for you to get that discount. Let's go. I'm gonna start off with this photo, adding my KT preset. Once I've done that, I'm gonna select all the photos, Control A or Command A in Mac. Then I'm gonna go Synchronize. We're gonna choose everything but not the white balance and also not the exposure, crop, healing and masking. The reason for that is I obviously don't want the white balance to run throughout the photos as well as the exposure because every image, exposure, white balance, cropping, etc., is different. So just go synchronize and this creates a nice base for all my photos right through the bank so that it's got pretty much the same foundation. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go deselect and then I'm gonna go select the first one again and now I'm gonna start editing this photo. First of all, what I'm gonna do is up the exposure then i'm going to do the white balance now for me when working with any preset whether it's my preset or maybe you bought someone else's preset i would give the great tip of saying that white balance and exposure is the biggest secret to it because those presets were most likely created for a certain look whether it's the exposure being dark and moody or bright as well as the white balance that will bring in that color and really justify or bring that preset to life the other thing at the moment that's bothering me a bit is obviously this twig or branch that's coming out at the top i'm going to go and select that i'm using Using the cloning tool for that I see it didn't do a great job so I'm just gonna redo it and go a bit smaller with my brackets on it redo that there we go that's better that little one there if I sometimes see that there's an edge that didn't work nicely with the cloning I'll use another clone tool and by the way the shortcut key for this is Q that looks like a better job there now I'm gonna remove the sprinkler here at the bottom right, which I don't like. So just remove that, see what job it does with that. I don't like that. So I'm gonna use the healing tool rather than the content aware remove. I still see a bit of the sprinkler there. So I'm gonna use another clone brush. There we go. I see another sprinkler here in the background, which I'm also going to remove. It's a bit distracting to my eye. I'm going to go back to the content aware. Click on it there. And I think we need to crop off a bit from the right just to balance the photo slightly better. Always make sure that your lock here is selected, that it's closed and unless you want to do a customized crop then i think i'm gonna lift up the shadows a bit more let's see what it looks like if i add a bit of veneting i've got a little preset here on the left for veneting 5 minus 10 and minus 20 because i always use camera profiles so that there's no like lens veneting i'd rather want to add it myself so that's a heavy veneting less and then even less so let's add that and I'm quite happy with that I think it's a bit of magenta skin tones here so I'm just gonna remove a bit of magenta that's great so I can see the next scene is exactly the same so now I'm gonna go select the next photo and I'm gonna go synchronize because it's the same scene I do want to now use on the synchronization the white balance and exposure and I go synchronize so what I forgot to say at the beginning guys is that when I edit and you can see it in my previous video is that I select the photos that I wanna edit. I select them all green and you can see at the bottom that they're all green. So as soon as I'm done editing a photo, I will press the button six and six will make the photo red and for that reason it will then disappear. Just going back to the gallery, you may need to make sure at the top here that you've selected the green button there. If it's green and red, the photo won't disappear because the red is obviously selected. So make sure only green is selected. I'm going back to the develop module by pressing D. The couple has now walked forward a bit. 
I'm gonna drop the exposure slightly on this one, open up the shadows even more. I see that sprinkler there again. I'm just gonna remove that. I'm also gonna remove the twig again at the top just by using the cloning tool. That looks good. It made a bit of a mess at the top there, but I'm not too worried because I do wanna crop off the top a bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna crop off a bit because I want the bride and groom to sort of be the same distance from the sides of the photo just to balance it out so that for me is good i'm gonna go six again and this takes us to a completely different scene i'm gonna up the exposure i'm gonna up the shadows quite a bit i am for this one gonna bring up the saturation just a tiny bit and i still want to up the exposure a bit and the shadows and I'm gonna just use the crop tool to straighten out the photo but it's a bit on the skew side and maybe crop off the, the left hand side there we go and I would like to bring a bit of light here in the groom's face so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the masks and I'm gonna select object and I'm just gonna brush over the groom and the bride side of her face and his whole face. It didn't wanna, so because it didn't want to select the bride's face, I'm gonna go plus and go object again and then again try to select her face. There we go, now it works. So now I'm just gonna up the exposure a bit, open up the shadows on his face a bit. I think the exposure is too much, I'm just gonna drop it a bit. That's great. And let's play around with the white balance a bit. I think there's a bit too much magenta. There we go. And then white balance looks good there. So for this one, I might want to bring the sky back. But I'm starting to lean towards a black and white photo here. But I'll check that just now. Let's just see what happens if I do bring back the sky. Select sky by using a masking tool. There it selects it. I'm going to use dehaze first and then exposure. Yeah, it looks good, but it doesn't make that greater impact on the photo. So I'm gonna actually delete it. And I'm gonna go black and white. I'm gonna use my um, KT black and white. It's got a soft one and a more of a contrasty one. Let's go with a soft one for now and see what it looks like. Let me just close that mask. That looks great. Bring less contrast, whites down, uh, highlights down, whites up and then bring up the shadows. We can even drop the contrast here. Then once we've done that, bring the blacks down and bring a bit more clarity and see what a bit of a netting will look like. Just a tiny bit. This little leaf here bothers me, so I'm gonna remove that. I'm also gonna remove this little white spot in the road, which I don't like. That looks good and maybe just crop off a bit. Let's see if I add a bit, a bit of contrast. I think that looks good for a photo. I'm gonna go six because then it will disappear again. This photo, let's um, play around first with the cropping just to get it up straight. I'm gonna crop a bit off the bottom so that they're closer to the edge. It's still skew, so let's just do that. That looks great. Open up the shadows, then bring those colors back in. So a lot of times when you bring all the colors back with the saturation, you might find that the yellows or even the skin tones is not working together. So if in this case, I'm gonna take the orange, bring it down a bit, even the yellows. That looks way, way better. And I'm gonna go orange a bit more for skin tones. If you pull it too far, guys, they're gonna look like vampires. Make sure that you are careful with that. I think that looks great. Six again, photo disappears. Next photo, it's lovely. Exposure up, magenta. I'm working always, try to work with the white balance quite a bit. This one I'm gonna crop off slightly off the left. For me, composition is quite a feel thing and how the balance of a photo is. Um, I do however think I'm gonna crop a bit less. That's much better. This leaf does bother me a bit, so I'm gonna remove it. That one as well, and that one. Great stuff. And then I see quite a bit of blue in his shirt, and I'm gonna use the blue slider just to make his shirt slightly whiter. And I'm happy with that. I 
do you think we need to oops sorry wrong button let's remove some skin blemishes here that's great let's look at her she looks fine that's great next photo let's press six so the next photo is the same scene so i'm actually going to press undo which is control or command z and I'm going to now synchronize the two photos because this is about consistency. I want the photos and the scene to look pretty much the same. I see the next couple of photos is still sort of the same light, same scene. So I'm going to synchronize them as well. Go and synchronize the lot of them. Now I'm going to press 6. You'll see immediately the next photo looks way better. I'm just going to drop the exposure on it a bit. So I still individually edit every single photo, but I have to like really check that the base of it is the same this light what do you call it street lamp is bothering me so i'm just going to remove it and for sake of time i'm not going to do a perfect job now but you do get an idea of what i look at when i edit um, there we go i think just remove a couple of blemishes there and that's fine i think i'm going to close down the shadows of it and also bring the blues back love that next photo make it a bit warmer already drop the exposure quite like the flare that's coming through there i'm going to crop off the left a bit so in a photo like this i'll experiment a bit with composition but what i'll also experiment with is to maybe bring in a um, radial filter which is shift m um, and that will create it so I'll put it on the sun drag it quite big make it an oval but then turn the oval to point towards the couple it's just an experiment I might not do this for the final image but I'm gonna use dehaze and then I'm gonna warm it up quite a bit and use a bit of tint as well the dehazing is a bit much for me there um, use exposure to also help it and then I'm gonna take the the master exposure if i can call it that of the photo and, and drop the exposure on that so you can see in this case the leaves becomes too flat for me um, i'm going to try one more thing and see if if i use contrast that looks better so let's see what the mask so if you want to see your before and after a mask there's a little eye here on the masks and i'm going to use before you have to hold it and after it actually looks nice i'm going to bring the exposure of the image back up but i just want to drop a bit of this contrast let's bring the exposure up shadows oh, i think it's quite nice but i'm also going to use a linear mask which you just press m for and just drop the exposure of the image on the left slightly you can see now with the radial filter and the linear filter being selected that the before and after of that and lastly i think a bit of a netting in this image would be great and perhaps a bit of clarity let's see what happens if i bring in a bit of clarity there we go quite like that image so the next couple of photos is exactly the same scene so i'm going to go synchronize i am again not using the mask synchronization because i might not want to do the same but white balance exposure is selected let that one disappear yeah, i'm going to bring a bit of saturation back i'm definitely going to crop off the left bottom left i like that i'm happy with that photo perhaps what we can do and as again a bit of an experiment is to use lightroom's new feature the adaptive subject and use pop go for pop it takes sometimes a bit of time it actually did do it but it didn't do much let's see yeah, and you can now control it either here or the top left here you can go the opacity that it needs to to run i'm happy with that photo i quite like this photo a lot i'm going to crop off the left a bit and i'm going to remove the leaves here i've put a little yellow dot for you guys to um, see my mouse cursor a bit better but i must say it creates quite a bit of a challenge to see the cropping and the brushing but i'll get used to it i think that's quite nice let's use the pop again for this i think it will be great to pop the couple a bit yes definitely let's see if i do it a bit less here with a slider at the top left and then crop off the bottom a bit more i like that 
bring in some veneting here. Yeah, a bit of veneting is great. I like it as it is. Next photo. It's pretty much the same, so I'm not even going to edit this for you guys. I'm just going to go to the next one. Okay, so completely different scene for this one. I'm going to start off with the exposure, bring the exposure up, bring the shadows up, and now I'm going to play with the white balance, bring the white balance up a bit. That looks great. So great tip for you guys, an extra one that I didn't think I'd share, but a great tip for you guys with regards to greens and how some photographers get that muted greens is to play with the yellow and green sliders on the saturation. So if I drag now the yellow slider all the way down, you'll see what happens. It mutes the greens completely. And a lot of people think it lies within the green slider, but it doesn't. It's actually yellow. There's a lot of yellow in leaves and so forth. And that's maybe a look you want to go for. I don't like it too muted, so I'm going to bring that back. Same with the green. You can use the green slider to either saturate the greens and so on. The yellow and green slider works hand in hand, but we'll get back to that just now in this photo. So in this photo, what I don't like is this pole, and I'm going to go to the content aware removal. Not make it too big. I'm going to like sort of brush so that I don't make sure it's like literally selected everything and then remove it. I'm happy with that. For time's sake, again, I'm not going to make it perfect now, but I would remove it properly. If I have to use Photoshop, I'll even do that. I'm quite happy with this photo. What I am going to do is I don't like the light balance of it. I'm going to use a linear filter. I'm going to run it skew from the bottom left upwards and drop the exposure quite a bit. And suddenly the couple like really pops out of the photo. I'm happy with that and we can go to the next shot. I see the next shot it looks like the same scene, so I'm just going to synchronize it. In this photo, I've got quite a bit of work to make the couple stand out of the photo. So I'm going to start off by using a linear mask again by pressing M, run it from the bottom up and drop the exposure quite a bit, just like that. Then from there, I think I'm going to use the pop function that Lightroom produces or offers. I'm going to go there. And before I continue with that mask, I'm just gonna like really bring up the white balance a bit, make it a bit warmer, drop exposure slightly. And I think also for the top here of the image, we need to run another linear filter from the top. That's gonna work, I think. Let's uh, drop the exposure on that as well. You can see now. Now, you can see the couple quite a bit better, but for me, it's a bit overdone. So I'm going to now go back to the mask that Lightroom created, and I'm going to drop the exposure on the couple slightly. There we go. 13 should do it. And I'm again going to open up the shadows of the image quite a bit. I don't like the window here on the right, really. It doesn't add to the photo that much, so I'm just going to crop it out. That's much better. Like the photo, I think maybe just slightly less magenta. Yeah, that's it. Let's see what clarity will do in this shape. In this case, that's great. Quite a dark area. This it was in the woods at the venue. The light suddenly came through the leaves, and we decided to put the couple there. It was quite beautiful. I'm gonna up the shadows quite a bit. The contrast, I want to drop quite a bit on this as well. Let's see what happens if I play with the yellows a bit, just to play with the greens and see what I can get out of the greens. I'm going to up the saturation a bit, but now you can see their skin tones is going through the roof, so I'm definitely going to drop a bit on the oranges here and have to drop quite a bit of the magenta hue there. Suddenly their skin tones is also getting better. I'm going to go clarity. Here at the bottom left, there's too much light for me. It doesn't quite make sense because the light is coming from the top right here. So I'm going to use another linear mask by pressing M, dropping the exposure quite a bit. There we go. I think we can go for a bit of warmth here. What do you guys think? And I want to remove a bit of blues. And that for me is very nice. Let's add a bit of venetting just to see what it's going to look like. The nice thing about Lightroom is you just have to hover over a preset. There's a new chocolate one that I'm working on. It's a timeless film look. So there's quite a few. I want to try one more preset, guys. It's my daylight preset. And I just want to see what it actually does. And I quite like the greens on this. Let's go for the daylight. So I'm 
changing preset knob for the specific scene and yes you can change presets while editing you don't have to use one preset throughout the whole wedding you do however need to make sure that it sort of runs otherwise when you print the album or maybe even blog your images it's going to look like a christmas tree if it doesn't flow so my presets are built on top of each other yes there are ones that's completely out of place or not out of place but it's different so you might want to use something moody um, if I hover over my filmic preset you can see it's way different and I won't use it for the scene it's just too different but I might use the filmic one for the same wedding in the bridal room for instance but getting back to this if I open up the shadows I love the colors of the leaves in the scene with my daylight preset you can see the yellows are quite low on it as well and I'm not going to do much more to it what I might want to do is because her dress looks a bit almost flat and it's because the highlights are so low so I'm just going to bring it up just that a tad more and I also want to drop the blues a bit and that is amazing I love that so I'm going to synchronize it because it's like very much the same scene in the rest of the photos and I want to show you how this now suddenly speeds up your editing so we're going to go synchronize so this photo is done i'm definitely going to check every photo by itself this photo's exposure is a bit high for me and i again just want to quickly bring in that um, linear mask here at the bottom done and the photo is done i can go to the next one again and that's how fast this will go now i can synchronize this mask but it might not work for every single photo and that's why I do it individually for this specific scene. I'm just going to straighten this out a bit. There we go. Again, I have to straighten out this one. Again, bring in that linear filter. I think the linear filter for every single photo does work. So for the rest of them that's left, I'm actually going to go and synchronize the mask as well just to speed up this process but that's how I would edit if I was editing you see now suddenly it's a close-up but the linear filter still works I am however going to up the exposure of this image slightly and that one is done yeah he was carrying it out now suddenly the rocks and their skin tones are a bit on the orange side for me so I'm just going to drop the oranges a bit up the exposure slightly and I'm happy with that, but I am going to synchronize now. When you do synchronize again, make sure now to switch off masking. So you need to keep track of what are the things that you did click on and like click off. And where it might become a real problem is if you've done either cropping or healing in your photos and you synchronize throughout the, the, the series of photos. Then you're going to have blodges and stuff on photos that you don't want because it cloned out stuff that wasn't there. It was on the first photo you edited, but it wasn't on the rest. So it's very important that you um, make sure of what you click on and off when synchronizing. But the synchronizing will make your job so much easier and faster. Done that one, I definitely want to crop off the right quickly. And I also don't like the white here at the top of the ceiling or the fascia of the building. So, and just straighten it out even more. That's great. Love that. Um, let's see what this looks like in black and white for a moment. I think black and white. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments down below. What do you think? What Was I supposed to do this in black and white or did you prefer the color? Tell me in the comments, guys. So I quite like it black and white, to be honest. I'm going to stick to that. Next scene, quite a bit darker. We're going to up the exposure quite a bit. Open up those shadows. I want to actually see what this will look like with my daylight again and daylight definitely works on this one the top here you guys can see the exposure is a bit brighter than the rest it takes a bit away from the couple so i'm gonna definitely drop the exposure on it quite a bit just maybe minus 10 or so now that looks good we definitely want to also pop the couple out but before i do it i want to bring a linear here and just darken this path here as well um, so that um, the attention can sort of be drawn to the couple I like that let's go and add another mask and we'll go with object I'm gonna select the object here go there and there so I use object more than I use people I find that it's faster more accurate and makes my life easier in this case now it's selected a bit of the tree I'm just gonna click on minus and click on brush and then 
zoom in, use the brush and just minus the selection that I don't want here. That was actually the grooms. So if you want to redo it, just press your Alt key. If you press Alt, you can um, just bring that part back that you by accident might have brushed. So I'm going to zoom out. Now all I'm going to do is just start off with the shadows and the exposure. You know what guys, looking at this now, I think the bride is actually bright enough. So I'm going to click on that and go minus and I'm going to take another brush and I'm going to actually remove the bride completely from the selection. Now to see what you have or haven't brushed before, just press O and it will show you the mask and then you can start brushing. So I'm going to remove the bride from the mask because as soon as I bring the groom up and because his suit is black, he sort of disappears in the shadows and that's why I want to just up the exposure on him a bit. And I'm going to zoom in to see if I'm actually creating a bit of noise on him or not. If the red is in the way, just press O again. So I can see there's quite a bit of noise happening there. And I am just going to do a bit of noise reduction there. And same with that, I'm also going to do the sharpening. And then I'm happy I see there's a bit of a something there on his um, suit. So I'm just going to remove it with a clone tool. That's better. So that looks so much better. The danger here, guys, is doing too much. So I feel like now looking at the image again that I've done too much. So I'm just going to drop the exposure on the groom ever so slightly. I'm happy with that. Like the image like this. Before we continue, I just want to say that keep your eye on your film strip at the bottom of your Lightroom. Because if you look at the film strip, you can see now the next couple of photos again is the same. So it's easy then for me just to click on all of them and synchronize again. So keeping your eye and training your eye to stay on that film strip of yours. It's going to make your editing way faster and way more consistent. You can see there, I'm not even going to do anything more. The light changed, so I feel like there's enough light on the groom there. Here's a portrait of the same scene. I'm just going to go straighten it out a bit. Maybe up the exposure slightly. Open up the shadows and I want to quickly remove this spot and mark on the groom's jacket. There we go. Zoom out. I'm happy with that. Let's go to the next one. It's a bit of a wider portrait scene. I like it. I feel like they're standing out enough. Might want to quickly look at doing a bit of a netting. Um, I'm not going to do the netting. I'm just going to bring in a linear mask from the left. And that makes them pop nicely. Go six again. Photo will disappear. Now they're just looking at each other. Just bringing in that linear filter again. Just like that. Straighten it towards the pole there. That's great. I don't like this branch too much at the top for this specific photo. So I'm going to crop it out. That's lovely. Love this scene. Uh, I know for a fact I'm going to go black and white on it. I just want to choose which one. I think that one. I'm going to open up the shadows quite a bit. Drop the exposure. Open up the whites. Drop the exposure even more. Drop the contrast quite a bit. And then bring in the clarity. Maybe now bring up the exposure. And so my black and white preset has got grain added to it automatically. And I don't want grain in this specific photo because I want a more smooth black and white type of look. So I've got three presets that gives you grain, a 40 grain, 20 grain and zero grain. I'm just going to go with zero grain. It immediately removes the grain from it. I'm happy with the photo apart from the composition and I just want to crop it off a bit like that, maybe even more and maybe add a bit of clarity. I'm happy with it. Beautiful portrait of this bride. Again, little wooden thing here at the bottom. It looks like a light. I'm just going to remove that as well. It's great. Just add another. Let me just zoom in there. With the cloning today, guys, I'm being very fast with it because I don't want to waste um, time specifically on cloning. 
if I do battle sometimes with cloning and I can't manage it in Lightroom, I take it into Photoshop and use all kinds of tools there. Um, one which we'll um, talk about soon. So I'm gonna remove the blues here a bit, but I'm leaning towards black and white for this one as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely black and white. I am gonna crop off a bit and then remove the grain as well. See if we can do the camera profile. Yeah, camera profile and then add some vignetting. Happy with the photo, let's go to the next scene. Beautiful, beautiful scene. We had such a lovely sunset, especially with the mountains. These photos, however, I can tell you was not the easiest to edit and it took me quite a bit of time. And I'm gonna show you why. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the shadows and the exposure add slight vignetting to it let's bring back those colors of the greens and the yellows bring the oranges down slightly now i'm gonna select sky as a mask so a lot of people use clarity and exposure for sky personally i like using the dehaze and then adding clarity later or exposure so you can see the dehazing, especially if I overdo it, it really brings out uh, the detail of the image or then the sky. I'm gonna add a bit of contrast, a bit of clarity, perhaps even bring down the exposure on it slightly. I am also gonna open up the shadows a bit more on this image and perhaps see what Lightroom's pop will do to it. I like the pop. The pop, however, is a bit too much, so I'm just gonna drop it over here a bit. I see also a bit of magenta on this photo, which I don't like, and I'm just gonna remove that. That's excellent. And then lastly, I'm gonna crop off just to get it on the thirds there. But what I wanna do now, guys, is see if I can somehow just bring those mountains back a bit. So I'm gonna go object, and we're gonna object the mountains with this mask so just brushing on the mountains and let's hope Lightroom does a decent job in selecting those mountains so those trees I'll deselect if it does select it now let's see so it didn't select it Lightroom you beast I like it let's go there and I'm going to use dehaze again and you can see suddenly the mountains comes out quite a bit. Now we do have a bit of a problem here with regards to the selection. So what I'll do is I'll add to the selection with a brush. And if we have to then, that looks way better. If we have to like redo it a couple of times, that's fine. I don't mind losing the trees a bit on it. Um, it's more important for me that the mountains are like properly selected. So I'm gonna select the trees and you'll see the trees will most likely become darker, but I don't mind it. But I'm gonna have to like every time, you know, choose the, the object, you see. So I've lost the trees in terms of the brightness of the trees, but I've gained the mountains. And for me, that is a good trade-off. One thing that I just spotted that I don't like in the image is this white little thing here at the bottom left. I'm just gonna remove it. Even that is distracting for me. So I'm removing that as well. We'll move that. I don't know if it's flowers or what that is. And um, this little white here, yeah, I don't mind the, the white pillars of the gates, but I do mind this white. It looks like a small roof or something. I don't know if it's a garden shed or something, but I'm gonna remove it. Excellent. So what I'm gonna do just to get the same exposure, same colors and everything, I'm gonna synchronize this whole scene. Say so synchronize, we're not gonna do the masking, guys, because every scene will differ. This image is very similar to the previous one, so I'm not gonna edit it. That one is also very similar. I'm just gonna pause it. The same will happen for this one. I think I'm just gonna pass on all these images because they're very similar to that very first one. All I'm gonna do is bring back those mountains, bring back the sky, and you've already seen it, I don't wanna bore you. So I'm just gonna pass through all of them. This one I might edit for you guys, um, just because it's a close up. We're gonna up the exposure quite a bit, open up those shadows just for his jacket. Quite like that. We might want to zoom in just to see those 
Gain blemishes. There we go. Even that little spot on his hair. Love that. Next image. Up it a bit. Crop the tree out again. I want a nice close up here, but I like those little three trees here on the left. So I'm going to leave that in. Straighten it out a bit. Like that. Get those animal borrowings for those golfers out there. Um, that's a free drop if you play golf. And <laughs> your ball is on a borrowing animal thingy majiggy. Uh, next one. Nice little kiss there. I'm definitely going to crop out and crop closer. We can even go just under her elbow like that. That's quite nice. The rest again is very much similar, so I'm just gonna skip it, skip it. That is quite a nice scene. I just wanna quickly edit this one for you guys. Open that up, make it slightly warmer now. I do wanna drop those yellows a bit for the, for the lawn. Gonna clone out these animal mole heaps, if you wanna call it that. And I think we need to bring back that sky. Let's bring back the sky a bit. Definitely dehazing it. Maybe a slightly warmer sky mm, or cooler. Nah, keep it the same. Dehazing a bit more, getting that clarity going. And I want to crop off the right a bit. Maybe that concrete slab needs to get out of there. Yeah, like that. Love it. Not edit that one, not edit that one too many of the same images so here we get to this bridge so i think i like the preset that's on it we're going to open up the exposure and shadows and then make it quite a bit warmer i see quite a bit of magenta so drop the magenta let's bring back the saturation as well and now i need to level out the image definitely and crop off the left just to bring a bit of balance get that couple a bit more closer to the thirds. I see a little sprinkler head there, which I'm gonna remove. Remove that. And then um, let's bring back that sky, guys. Select the sky with the masking and then go dehaze. If I'm going too fast, just uh, pause the video and play it slowly or like skip back and forth a bit. Uh, that will help you guys. And um, let's saturate this guy slightly. I think that's quite nice. And what I'm also going to do now is create another mask. And I'm going to go object on the mountains. See how that comes out on that specific mountain range there. That's great. Go dehaze on them as well. That will bring them sl back slightly. Then we're going to do another mask, also object. And we're going to select that mountain over there again i'm going to use dehaze like it look at this before and after guys i think it's quite magnificent so i'm gonna synchronize the rest of the scenes that's left over but i'm again not doing the masks it's beautiful let's select start off by selecting the sky and bring it back by dehazing again and dropping the exposure quite a bit Bringing some contrast, bringing some clarity. A uh, bit of orange in this one for me. Drop the orange. Again, we've got that sprinkler to remove. That's lovely. And then bring back the mountains. I'm not actually going to do it in this one because you can obviously see it's exactly the same as the previous image. So for time's sake, I'm going to skip on it. Let's go to the next one. Excited to show you this image. I'm also going to show you the before and after once we're done. But lastly, I'm going to drag it into Photoshop and remove the bridge. And it's going to take me like 30 seconds, maybe a minute, with the new AI feature, which is absolutely mind-blowing. We might even put a whale in, or a horse, or whatever. Let's see what we're in the mood for. Any case, let's start off by editing this. We're going to go sky. Bring down the sky with T-Haze again. Drop the exposure quite a bit like that clarity now we're going to go object select the mountain love that um i think let's um 
yeah let's do that mountain quick and go d haze drop the exposure slightly i think i want to bring in some, a bit of clarity as well then go object again select the other mountain and go dehaze again that one pops nicely i like that excellent for this i want to clean up the image quickly by removing some feathers here there was a quite a few ducks around and their feathers are here on the lawn Alrighty, i want to open up the shadows of the image quite a bit but i do want to bring down the saturation and a bit yellow let's see what the oranges do when i bring them down and then i want to warm up the image itself by doing a bit more white balance maybe even magenta and now i want to bring up the couple so i'm going to do an object mask and just brush over them make the brush a bit smaller and brush over them that's awesome opening up the exposure and the shadows and i'm going to use the amount slider here ah oh, sorry and i'm going to bring back the exposure a bit again i like that so this is the before and the after of this image what i want to do now is take it into photoshop and how you do that is pressing Control or Command on Mac and E. And that will then open up Photoshop for you. So if I open up Photoshop now with the image in there and I take the lasso tool and I just make a rough selection around the bridge. It doesn't have to be this perfect selection. There we go. And then it will give you this little box. Go generate a fill and I say to it, remove the bridge. And I click enter it will render and it will take time again depending on your PC speed or your laptop speed um, this might take a while okay it's done so what it's actually done is it had created a like a pathway to the island um, I actually wanted it to <laughs> remove the bridge and keep the water there's a bit of a better effort that's a better effort that's actually not bad like a you know a proper lawn towards the bridge i'm actually gonna redo it and make the selection a bit wider around the bridge and see if it will then remove the bridge say remove the bridge there we go that's removed the bridge it added something else there at the front i don't know what that is but that we can easily clone out it does give you three um, options that's maybe a better option and then a third option it added another path which is actually quite nice um, so for the sake of it being more realistic because if we choose that the that one or even that one the viewers question might be how did the couple get on the island well they took a boat um, but <laughs> they didn't so let's put that in I'm going to flatten this layer and then just for a bit of fun I'm going to use the lasso tool make a nice big circle here on the pathway and say add a horse and let's see what it does so there's the horses guys um, they're quite huge to be honest I don't know where they breed them um, it has given me th two other options which is pretty cool the lighting is a bit wrong I would say um looks a bit unrealistic but you can see where photoshop is heading towards it's quite crazy let's hop over to lightroom in this image i'm going to remove the sprinkler and then from there i want to go for an arty feel on this one but i just want to clean up the background a bit yeah it's got a bit of blodges oh i hate it when uh, lightroom does that let's go out go in that's better crop off the left because I want them in the middle or the poles like in the middle image seems a bit skew pull it up straight that's it and I'm going to use a film preset of mine which I think might be pretty nice for this yeah I'm definitely gonna use this 
takes away quite a lot of blues. I'm just going to bring back a bit of blue there in the sky. I like the warmy feel here. I might want to reduce the grain or even add it. Let's go a bit cooler on the image as well. Not too cool. Add a bit of clarity. Quite like that. So this I would typically do if I want to like just have two images maybe stand out. If I know the couple is going to choose it for the album, I will then edit it more to look like the other photos. But I think this might be printable images. It's going to go on their wall. It's going to be standing out from all the others because it's uh, edited in a different way. But I quite like that image. Last stretch of photos. Quickly want to run through them. The scene is quite the same. So it's probably going to be go and synchronize. And then I'll share that 50% uh, discount code with you guys. I'm going to crop off the left here. We're going to remove a bit of blues. And I'm definitely removing whatever is in the background there. I don't know if it was people or pillars or what may have you. There we go. Some skin blemishes that we need to remove here. Love that. Give it up. That's natural. Going to leave it like that and then go synchronize on everything because the whole scene is pretty much the same. Again, I've done now skin blemishes. I've done some removal of things in the background. So if I do the healing now with regards to the synchronize, we're going to have a problem. So I'm not going to do it. Just synchronize it there. That's awesome. Just remove that again. I think for this one, I might go for a portrait crop just to bring a bit more focus on them. Love that. Do you guys think I should go black and white on this? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Just hover over the black and white preset that you might have. I think I'm going to go black and white, guys. So I'm going to go there. I am going to soften it a bit by just doing a bit less contrast and then zooming in and removing some more skin blemishes. That's great. Love that. Perhaps even a little linear filter from the bottom left. Just, yeah, that is it. Love that image. Press six, next one. Nice little laugh. I think the rest is the same, guys. It's going to go just removing skin blemishes, doing some exposure and white balance. All the images seem to be the same now. So I don't want to waste your time with regards to that. Uh, here's one close-up. Let's quickly do this close-up before we finish out. All right, I'm going to do the white balance, exposure. Before I finish this image, as promised, guys, if you use this code, I will give you 50% off my Omnibus preset pack. It's in my store, linked below, and I hope you enjoy it. It will only be available for three days, so make sure to grab it. What I want to do in this image is to remove the skin blemishes a bit. Do that one. There, there. And I want to bring a bit more attention to the couple themselves. So I'm definitely using a linear filter from the bottom left, dropping the exposure a bit on that. And then I want to take out the blues. He's a bit of blues in his shirt. I'm going to remove the blues quite a bit. If you're not sure what color is there, you can use this little tool here, the adjust saturation and drag it on the photo. It will show you if you go up, there's quite a bit of magenta or purple in it. So I'm just going to drop it. And then for this close up, I think what we can do, and I just want to show you guys, and this is maybe the last thing I'm going to show you today, is the Glamour Portrait Adaptive Preset that Lightroom has. So if I click on it, you will see that it now gave her like smooth skin, him as well. I don't want to leave it there because I know it does it a bit hectically. So I'm going to do the amount here a bit less. But I'm also going to activate all the masks so that I can see where I did a mask. And I now want to click on the facial mask. So two things I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the groom from the image um, or from the selection because I don't want to soften his skin too much. And I also want to do her brows or um, eyelashes, sorry, um, by using a brush. So first of all, the brush on our eyelashes, again, pressing O to activate the mask so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do that over there. 
And I'm also going to do her lips. We don't want to lose her lips and get them too soft. We want a bit of detail in the lips. Now I'm going to make the brush quite big. Oh, that was too big. There we go. Get that out. And that should give me quite a bit of a better selection. I see a blemish here, which I just want to remove. I see it's actually a natural blemish, but we are going to remove it. And that is it. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Click on this video to see my basic Lightroom workflow and um, smash that like button. Click on the subscribe button and make sure to ring the uh, notification bell. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.